So if you are in a university and you fall for a zoo, then you say, a yazan. If, if you see anybody wearing NDC t-shirt on this campus, pray for the person. Don't think, don't think I'm saying that because I'm a member of the MPP. I am a member of MPP by choice. Closely. 
Watch them closely. All of them, I think they are 30 or 30 minus one or something. Check all of them and ask yourself, who can be in, who can be my father? Or who can be my mother? Such that the person will think about my well-being. All elections is about your well-being. So if you decide you want the person who will open 24 hour disco because your life will be 24 hours in the disco, you have to be your person. When I was your age, when I was your age, I was in KDOSD. And I had to make a decision at that time. Who do I want to lead the future? I can tell you that time, it was 22 years ago. Or was it 22 years ago? 1992, 32 years ago. 32 years ago. I'm sure 90% of the people in the room here were not born. But I was in your shoes. And I was supposed to choose who I think can lead me to the future. That time there was no test call. But we formed a party, a students group for one of the parties. The party had been in power before. We have only read about them in history books. But when we read their manifesto and we listened to them, and we didn't have a bottom more of radio stations, so we have to strive for them the first two and read for yourself. We decided that the country that can best champion the future of our youth was MPP. So I didn't stop. I struggled to become the MPP leader at that time, students leader at that time. And I was in a medical school. And we were going for lectures every day. We didn't have your day off like you do, my brother. So we were going for lectures every day. And we had to organize the party on campus. And it was not test con, commitment, but we need to reduce weight. It wasn't that way. It was MPP, we are going to work for you to make sure you come to power. Because I personally, personally felt, when I looked around, all the candidates that are appearing or want to contest, none of them would be my father, except Professor Mubwai. I would not wish any of them to be my father. If you can't wish somebody to be your father, don't vote for that person. Simple. If you don't wish for a prosperity for yourself in the future, take your vote for joke. If you are going to UPSC, whether you like it or not, you will finish within the next three years. So you don't care about tomorrow, joke with your vote. Because it was not always like this. Just about eight years ago, go and look at the pictures of UPSC, if you have it. Eight years ago. And go and look at the pictures of UPSA now. All I want to tell you is that leadership matters. And it is not five people who leadership what matters. It is the person who is the leader who will change and better your future. It is, not, it is not all MPP people who are coming to rescue you. But it is who that person is. So if you hear that somebody said that, I don't care about students going to secondary school. And I'm not joking. Go and look at the educational sector report 2015. Or 2012. You Google, you find it. In black and white, NDC said the secondary education is for only rich men. They don't believe that poor people to go to secondary school. And still say 2012, the person who signed that report is still alive. Yesterday, I met her at the video, but he will do so. He was an education minister. And when they produced that report, they said, ah, so what will happen to poor people? They said we should go and test all their parents to see if their parents can pay or cannot pay. Isn't it? What about if you test and their parents cannot see? What would you do for them? You know what the mama said? They said, I'll let them work whilst in school, secondary school. I'm not talking about university. 
you left your son, you left your daughter, who is between the age of 12 and 15, or 15 and 18, work whilst in school to earn something to pay the school fees and spend. So if somebody read it and decided that the future of the country is not safe under NDC, you will also have to read and listen to what they are saying now to see whether the future of the country is safe under NDC. Imagine, in Ghana, secondary education is the modern education, right? Nearly 80% of all students are in secondary school. So, the best secondary school, the best college in Ghana is Premier College. No two is right. No two is right. It's the only, the only college that wins international robotic competition regularly. Not once. The regular is the is the school of the future. We are preparing preparing students for the future. Imagine there are about thousand five hundred or so or two thousand people in Premier College. There's only one dining hall. And there are only about 10 houses with lavatories, toilets, and buildings. So if 30% of the students there are poor, and you say in their secondary school, and you say they should work in the school to earn money, to be able to pay their fees, what is even the work they can do in the school? Just ask yourself. So remember that if you didn't believe what you are reading, it is that same party that an minister came to sit on TV and said that there's so much work to do. If you like go to the bush and carry stone and come and put on the roadside, if you carry stone for three days and put it on the roadside, you will get money and you'll be unemployed. If you don't come carry the stone, go and get a sickle and start cutting the grass. Start cutting the grass. That grass is not a concern that you eat to do. Then you pick any place to eat the grass and you get money. They said it, and you can Google. So it is not what they are going to do, what they are saying. So just two days ago, the Minister of Finance, under John Dramani Mahama, he should speak up. He said it's not everybody who is entitled to free SHS. Why is that in safety? Why is that in the internet? But the story is even more difficult. If you think, when Kwame Nkrumah of blessed memory introduced partly free education in the North, especially in the second grade, President John Kramani Mahama, his father was one of the richest Ghanaians, not rich man, one of the richest Ghanaians. At that time, he was in a boarding school called Achimota Primary. Only privileged people can take their children to Achimota Prime, true or false. Mm. But when his father, Henga Kwame Nkoma, has introduced free secondary education in the North, he started to all him, John Ramama's siblings, including John Ramama. And all of a sudden, he remembered that they came from Tamale, took them there to go through free education. And this is the man that is telling you, if you are poor, don't go to school. Not only that, too, listen to what they do. Recently, about three months ago, he was in Tamale. He said Tamale people are giving birth left, right, and center, and that is why there is poverty. He even thinks that when you are poor, you give birth. Because, again, 2001 to 2008, all the people here, I call most of them, for four babies. And this is the reason. That is when President Kufo introduced free maternal care. Before free maternal care, children or mothers would go to hospital to where give birth. And if you didn't have money, you stayed in the hospital. They refused to let you go home with your baby and yourself. Tell your family, they go and sell something and come and take you from hospital. And then President Kufo introduced free maternal care. As soon as President John Dramani Mahama became the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, under President Mills, the first thing they cancelled was free maternal care. The next thing they cancelled was national health insurance. So even when you are poor, you should not be able to get access to health care. 
Then to make it worse, before President Mahama, before President Kufuor came, every child, when you're going to public school, it was called the shift system. You go 8 in the morning, you close at 12. Some come and start at 1 and close at 4. Four hours of education in a day. That is one day of it. And if you are going to school, you became a power bar because your table and chair was on your head. Don't believe that it didn't happen to you. You find it incredible that it happened, but it was in Ghana. But when the four came, he introduced school capitation grant in schools, and they stopped charging. And he introduced school feeding because he felt that some children were from poor homes. Between four years, after four years of that policy, four years, the parity, the gender parity in Dixie School was one to one. Equal number of boys and girls were now going to school. Because for the poor family, if you have five kids, he will check. This is the first newborn you can go to school. This is the girl. Let's prepare her for marriage. Oh, that is a simple choice. Because there's nobody. Not everybody can go to school. This is the fourth one. He's very, very smart. But he's devilish. He's devilish. Stay home. This is the fifth one. He's nice. I'll name him after myself. You go to school. That was the educational lotteries the poor people had to go through. So you see, most families, it will be only one person who will be educated. And I believe in the Bible. And I believe that in every family, God creates the game changer. And if you miss that opportunity of the game changer, that family is finished. But even before that family, the game changer emerges, life's decision has been made not in his or her favor. So before 2016, 80% of the best schools in the Ghana, basically, that's the top 55 schools, right? That is called category A schools. 80 to 90 percent of those who went to those category A schools all had private education. So, listen, though, just three days ago, I had Ghana National Association of Private Schools are telling us that they are going to court to stop the free SHS for allocating 30 percent of placements to poor children who go to public schools. The audacity. The audacity. The nerve. So, who feels the way you can have a back for private primary school? For the more private secondary school. But the reality was that that when I introduced 30% for equity, I didn't pluck it from the sky. It already existed, but abused from the well connected and the privileged. They call it catchment area. So when the children went to do the exams and they didn't do well, they said, oh boys, oh girls. So when we started at Chibata, when we were the old boys and old girls, when they started at Chibata for the first 10 years, they didn't have any old boys and old girls. But listen to them, until of Chibata school, from Ayawasu, Ah, tell me, give me the words, please. Yes, 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 you, you, yeah, yeah, you know yourself. Yes, yes, you, you, yes, you, you in black shirt, black, black bread. You know the team of Ashwater School, right? You went to Ashwater School, right? Aha, get up from Was it from when? Listen, from Gambaga to Accra. From Riyasu to Kita. We are brothers and our mothers. You know, at that time, when it was not what is, thank you. I, I, I'll give you a present. I'll give you a present. When, when, when school went, went, went on long vacation, when school went on long vacation, the head teacher of Atimata was mandated to travel around the whole country in search of not brilliant, uh, not rich people, but brilliant minds and bring them to Achimota. That was the foundation of Achimota School. 
I told us we will not set out for the rich and privileged. But come to 2012 to 2016, 90% of all those who went to our children were only privileged. Oh, my papa was going to go to the church. And the one who papa was going to go to the Good primary school, quite water. So when we started the free education, a headmistress of a certain school remarked, ah, school you pay exit, car park, I empty. But the rich have not populated the school hundred percent. Right? So when it is time to vote, it's not a time to joke. That's it. When it is the time to vote, it is not a time to think twice. So if you are in a university and you fall for a zoo, then you say, hey, if, if you see anybody wearing NDC t-shirt on this campus, pray for the person. saying that because I am a member of the MPP. I am a member of MPP by choice, not by death. By choice. Because I was thinking, if you are in the university and you cannot think, who else must think? Oh. Just about one month ago, I went somewhere and I said, the reason why I cannot join NDC is that they killed seasoned pastors in this country. They say, Yaga in Mapokasa. Google, Odifu Asari in Kumasi, they killed 78 persons in a two week ordeal. Went to kill a policeman in Konfanote, shot the policeman on the hospital bed, and dragged Odifu Asari, tied to a taxi, dragged him to Kreditia, and used him as a shooting target. Killed him, and 78 members of his church. Google. Why? But it happened. So when it happened, I have to know the history that this party has to be careful. Right? Then in 2014, 15, 16, you hear a presidential candidate standing on the platform saying and bragging, my party has got revolutionary roots. We are not afraid of violence. If we do, we will visit you with violence. Then you know that your life is at stake just as they kill some people. So when I say this is a party that kills people, I'm not just saying it to I'm saying that we should never forget the intent that and they will never change. I said it and I gave lots of examples. So if you are in the university and you can't, now that all the information is on your phone, just Google and you'll find. Don't joke with your future. You are the ones who should go out there and propagate a better government for Ghana. There are people, when I started my political training, I met on campuses because I used to have a love for going to tertiary university campuses. Because if you look at the segment of people who don't vote, the our university or tertiary school girls, the ladies here, the ladies in UK, uh, Lagos, the ladies in Poly at that time, they don't vote too. Because Saturday or Tuesday, when it is time for voting, no way it is. So we have to work extra on them to live up to their responsibilities. I tell you, go and check UPSA where you are. Go and look at the number of students they had in 2016 and check the number of students they had in 2024. You see the level of increase. Why? Because leadership matters. Why? Because leadership matters. When UPSA was constructing hostels to benefit students, some people, another leadership in another university, had collected money and chopped. That today, Ghana government is still paying. Two wow. universities. Bakukoji is Kanwarele. What is it? Bakukoji is Kanwarele. So don't take it as a joke about when they are selecting leaders. It's true. It is not a popularity contest. 
or a beauty contest. It is for somebody who is going to take decisions on your future. So, when I became Minister of Education, the total number of students in secondary school were about 800,000. Of that 800,000, I tell you, a third will not finish school. Go again to check Google. Every year, the conference of head of assistant secondary schools in the north, Charles, who closed secondary schools for about three months because government has not brought salvation. When they started school, go and Google, 2015, Okuja Toe was all over the air. They did three rounds of school placement. December, they are doing school placement. So the first 10, nobody went to school if you had Form 1. And the academic calendar for SSS was nine terms. Form 1, 3, Form 2, 3, Form 3, 3. Go and check. If you see, if your leadership is bad, everything is bad. So first time, they didn't go to school. And when they finished final year, they started WASI in January, February. So they missed second term, and they missed third term. So three months out of the night, I am. Yeah. Simple reason why students' failure rate was high. So you look at the core courses, English, Math, Social Study, General Science, right? At no time before 2016, could they pass back 40% in mathematics? At no time did they pass 45% in English. That is the basics. So where would they go to university? Every year, about 520 to 550,000 children are born. Every year in Ghana here. Leave out those who go to secondary school. Leave the state level. Go to primary school. Right. But BEC, go and check. It's always about 400 and something thousand. By the time they go to SSC, it's almost about 300,000, 260, 270, 280,000. So between that time, how many students are gone? 100,000. And at that time, they don't have a certificate to go and look for work. Yes, yeah, someone will come and tell you, if you get free SHS, you don't get work. But I would better have a student educated at secondary level than at the BEC level. Because at least, with WASI, at least with the WASI certificate, you can get employment in the civil service. You can get employment in the police service. You can get employment in the immigration service. You can get employment in the uh, prison service. You can get employment in the fire service. You can get employment in customs. With WASI, with BEC, zero. So who are not better? The person who says if Ghana should go to bankrupt and that all citizens should get secondary education, and the person who says yeah, she have to to a day, to pay that. Forty thousand school children could not access their results in 2015, 2016, BEC and SSE because they couldn't pay examination fees. Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Now. BC was this a uh, down fees about 100 percent pay back. The best WASI result ever, the best WASI result 